At home, when I was packing my belongings, my smartphone suddenly rang. The screen displayed the word, Mom. I picked up the phone and answered the call. Hello? Hey, where are you right now? I'm at home. Our son has been urgently transported to the hospital. Come to the hospital right away. In a tense moment, my mother-in-law informs me of my husband's emergency, but I could not suppress a burst of laughter. Mom, I, I'm not going to the hospital, okay? What are you saying? If something happens... I don't care about if something happens, because my feelings have been decided for a long time. My name is Ashley Miller, and I'm 29 years old. I'm a very ordinary company employee working for a major beverage manufacturer. My husband, Travis, and I have been married for over two years. People around me often say things like, seems to have no worries, and each time I laugh it off. But is there really anyone in this world without worries? Even someone as carefree looking as me is currently burdened by a significant concern. The catalyst was three months ago, and it happened so suddenly. My smartphone received a message from my husband. We'll be late due to overtime. Since preparing dinner for just myself after returning home seemed troublesome, I decided to dine out somewhere. I headed to a restaurant that had caught my interest three stops before the nearest station. Despite being tired from work, it being the weekend made my steps light. This restaurant had received high ratings, and I had wanted to try it for a while. If the food is good, I thought I'd bring Travis next time. Replying on the smartphone map, I arrived at the restaurant. The storefront was illuminated, and though small in size, it exuded a certain presence. Just as I put my hand on the entrance door, a cruel sight came into my eyes. What? Why? In the back seat, there was my husband. Across from him sat an unfamiliar woman with long hair. Without hesitation, I let go of the doorknob and desperately tried to control my trembling body. What am I looking at now? I couldn't believe my eyes. What does that mean? Travis said he has overtime today. Who's the woman with him? What's their relationship? Questions arose one after another, gradually leading to panic. One thing is certain. My husband is having dinner with a woman at a restaurant under the guise of working late. Unable to stand still, I turned on my heel with determination. I just want to get away from that place, so I kept running in a frenzy. When I came to my senses, I found myself in an illuminated park. I sat on a bench to sort the situation. Perhaps my husband is just having a meal with a colleague from work. There might be nothing suspicious. I tell myself this over and over again, and decide to go home for the time being. I decided to wait for my husband to get home and talk to him. I'm home. The front door opened, and my husband's lively voice could be heard. Checking the time, it was already past 11 p.m. I couldn't shake off the discomfort, thinking about him being alone with another woman until this late hour. For now, I pretended not to know anything and brought up the conversation. Hey, Travis. So, today, did you eat somewhere? Somewhere, I mean, I bought dinner at a convenience store and had it at the office. While working? Of course. I didn't have the luxury to sit down in a restaurant. I was too busy. You were that busy? So, going out to eat with a colleague from work? Oh, no, no. I was invited for a drink by a colleague who stayed late, but I said, my wife is waiting, and came straight home. Travis talks as if he were proudly describing himself as a good husband. I could only put on a fake smile because I knew it was all a lie. Maybe I should have confronted him more firmly at that moment. But without clear evidence, claiming cheating would put me at a disadvantage. If he's really cheating, I'll have to gather solid proof before discussing it with him. It's not the right time for that. I convinced myself, 
From that day on, I began to investigate my husband's movements. I started noticing several suspicious behaviors that I hadn't paid attention to before. He always carries his smartphone with him, never leaving it behind. Late at night, he quietly leaves the bedroom and doesn't return for about an hour. And the frequency of overtime has noticeably increased compared to before. Overtime work, which used to be at most a few times a week, occurs now almost daily. Business trips, which used to occur once every few months at most, have increased every month in the past six months. With the unmistakable oddities in my husband's behavior, I became convinced. He is indeed cheating. And the other woman is the one with the long hair I saw that time. From then on, things progressed quickly. Since my working hours end an hour earlier than my husband's, on days when I received a notice about overtime, I started waiting for him at a cafe where I could see his office. When he came out, I followed him and, as expected, found him meeting his affair partner in an alley. It was a woman I saw at that restaurant. The two of them boldly embraced, exchanging kisses a few times. I recorded that moment on my smartphone, enduring the nausea. Afterward, they hailed a taxi and disappeared somewhere. Since further tailing them was difficult, I abandoned the pursuit there. Back home, I checked the video, but due to the darkness, it wasn't very clear. I don't know if this is enough evidence. So I decided to take the bold step of hiring a private investigator. While searching for a reputable detective agency on my computer, my smartphone rang. When I realize it's my mother-in-law calling, my bro furrows involuntarily. Letting out a deep sigh, I switched my mindset and answered the phone. Hello? Ah, Ashley, it's me. What were you doing just now? Huh? Right now? Um, well, I was doing some research on the computer. Huh. <sighs> you answered the phone earlier than usual, so I figured it must be something like that. If you were cooking or doing laundry, you'd have taken longer to answer, right? Even if you're doing housework or not, it should be the same as long as you have your smartphone with you. I couldn't quite understand my mother-in-law's reasoning, but without delving into it, I continued the conversation. Um, so mom, what's the matter today? It's not what's the matter. You know what it is. When are you going to quit your job? Ah, if it's about that, as I always say, I don't have plans to quit my job anytime soon. Huh? Are you still saying that? You're part of the Miller family, you know? Instead of working, hurry up and focus on the household. But considering the future, I think it's better for me to work and save money. Travis is earning, so there shouldn't be any problem, right? You always make excuses. You're not cute as a daughter-in-law, you know? In my usual habit, I involuntarily mutter an apology. I'm fed up with myself like that. Is it a story from some bygone era that women quit their jobs and enter the home just because they got married? To put it plainly, I actually earn more than my husband. My mother-in-law is still unaware of this fact, and she mistakenly believes I'm just a daughter-in-law who continues to work without contributing significantly. It's fine that her son is dear to her, but it's going too far. The calls from my mother-in-law are increasing day by day. What started as once a month is now every two days. Every time I'm told to quit my job and focus on the family, and it's wearing me out. Even consulting with my husband hasn't led to a solution. I've asked him many times to talk to his mother, but he hasn't done anything. Instead, my husband laughed and said, But isn't what mom says true? Eh, Travis, do you also think I should quit my job? It's not that, but it's normal, right? A woman is better off being at home, isn't she? But if I do that, our life will... Huh? Are you implying my earnings are not enough? No, it's not like that. So that's what you mean, right? Whether you're looking down on me or not, making such comments 
is a turn off. I'm sorry. Since then, I feel like I might step on his landmine again, so I can't bring up this kind of conversation. Perhaps, no matter how carefully I choose my words, he will interpret them sarcastically. If he's cheating, he likely thinks I won't find out at all. Maybe he doesn't even expect me to do anything if I find out. His actions had become so bold. Perhaps it is my own fault for not having noticed the affair before. But the fact remains that cheating is far worse. Afterward, I found a reputable private investigator. So I decided to request an investigation of my husband's affair to find out who the other party was and to get proof of the affair. A few days later, when I went to inquire about the results, the outcome confirmed my suspicions. The person involved in the affair was a woman named Rachel Silva, a colleague at the same company as my husband. I was thinking that I would like to have more evidence when my husband made the following comment. Next weekend, I have a business trip. Business trip? Where to? Chicago. I'll buy souvenirs, so look forward to it. Got it. I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if he's really going on a business trip or if he's going out with his affair partner. Anyway, I decided to inform the investigator at the private detective agency about this fact and request an investigation. While he's away on a business trip, I decided to visit my parents' house. A week later, my phone suddenly rang in the morning. The screen displayed message from mom. While thinking that this might be the last time I talked to her, I tapped the call button. Hello? Hey, where are you right now? My mother-in-law inquires about my whereabouts with a sense of urgency. I knew that this was not a normal situation, but I responded calmly. Now? I'm at home. Home? Then pack your bags right away. Huh? What do you mean? Travis has been rushed to the hospital. Come to the hospital immediately. Rushed to the hospital? Why do you, Mom, know about it? We got a call. He told the ambulance crew to call me, not his wife, you. My mother-in-law explains this to me with a somewhat triumphant tone. Perhaps my husband asked his mother to contact me, fearing that his affair would be exposed. Unaware of this, my mother-in-law yelled at me. Are you listening? Travis had an accident. He's conscious, but he can't move his body. No, oh, really? Oh, really? Is that all you can say? Anyway, come to the hospital right away. Here's the location. The hospital's address and phone number are provided through the phone. However, such irrelevant details don't register in my ears. My mind is filled with a sense of serves you right, so those details don't matter. Simultaneously, I became convinced that the timing for revenge is now and no other time. Are you even listening? My mother-in-law raises her voice and I quietly respond. Mom, I won't go to the hospital. What are you saying? If something happens... If something happens? Even if something were to happen, it's his own fault, isn't it? I'm going back to my parents' house. Huh? Are you serious? Your husband has been rushed to the emergency room. Soon, he won't be my husband anymore. Goodbye. Saying this, I ended the call. My mother-in-law called several times afterward, but I didn't answer. A few days later, when I visited the detective agency, I heard a surprising fact from the investigator. What? Paralyzed on one side? Yes, it seems your husband, who was in the passenger seat during the accident, was severely injured. What about that woman, Rachel? She only suffered minor bruises. She has already been discharged. I see. It turns out that the one driving was not my husband, but his affair partner. I had heard that in the case of a car accident, the passenger seat could suffer more significant damage, but I never expected it to be this severe. However, even after hearing about such a situation, I didn't feel any pity. Instead, I couldn't help but see it as a punishment for betraying me. After receiving evidence of the affair trip from the private investigator, I immediately visited a law firm. Since the evidence was solid, I was able to quickly initiate divorce proceedings and claim alimony. 
That night, as I was about to go to sleep at my parents' house, my phone rang. My husband's name appeared on the screen. With the intention of settling things with this call, I answered. Hello? Ashley, why aren't you coming to the hospital? Why? It wasn't you who told the paramedics to call my mother-in-law. But you're still my wife, right? Normal wives would come, at least for a visit. Why wouldn't I come for a visit? Don't you understand that better than anyone else? Huh? Did you think you weren't caught? Your affair? That affair trip with Rachel ended in a terrible accident. My condolences. Why bring up Rachel? Seemingly, my husband didn't think I was aware. He stammered and appeared unsettled. In the background, my mother-in-law's voice could be heard asking, What's going on? It seemed she didn't comprehend the situation. Making sure she heard, I responded loudly. I knew you were cheating. I was just waiting for the right moment. Even this time, I went back to my parents' house when you went out. Wait a minute. I did indeed have a relationship with another woman. But we've already broken up. Broken up? As soon as I became partially paralyzed, she said, I can't handle caregiving. Ha! Serves you right, doesn't it? Being dumped so easily is quite amusing, isn't it? What's amusing about it? I'm so hurt. Just come and visit already. Even in this situation, my husband seemed devoid of any guilt. It felt foolish to continue the conversation, so I decisively spoke. So hurt? Come and visit? Don't make me laugh. Do you have any idea how much I've suffered because of your affair? You, who betrayed your wife without a second thought, have no right to say you're hurt. It's not that. See, you can't even respond, can you? You did the lowest possible thing. No matter how much you apologize or grovel, I won't forgive you. You and your mother there. You've trampled on people's feelings, caused so much suffering. I don't care what happens to you two. Recognize your sins and spend the rest of your life in discomfort. Carry that paralyzed body of yours. Wait, Ashley. Hey, Ash. I ended the call abruptly as if cutting off his attempts to cry and beg. To avoid further involvement, I set the call to reject all future calls. Later on, we divorced. He and his cheating partner were charged a reasonable fee for the affair. The lump sum alimony payment apparently left Travis's savings in the negative. With his inability to work as before, his income essentially became zero. He was left paralyzed and in debt. He is now living with his mother at his parents' house, but his body is not doing what it wants, and he seems to be getting more and more stressed every day. Because of that, he and his mother are arguing loudly, their arguments reaching the whole neighborhood. But honestly, I don't feel sorry for them. It seems like the right consequence. At best, I hope he suffers and atone for his sins. I, on the other hand, live peacefully at home with my parents. I talked to my job about it and asked to move closer to home. After dealing with a lot, I want to be a bit kinder to myself. If I get the chance to meet someone nice, I'll take my time and build a good relationship.